Hi, and welcome to cornbreadwisdom.com. I wanted to tell you a little something about painting. We've been remodeling our garage here, uh, going to turn it into a home office, but this is the laundry area, and right here, this is our water heater. We've had a new door put on the water heater cabinet, piece of plywood, and my children, our children here, are going to be painting this. Unless you're going to paint within, say, 30 minutes of actually getting the, uh, the paint home from the store, you're going to have to mix it again. It's been mixed already. This, although it looks white, is actually what they call Swiss coffee. That's their color for it. And there are pigmentations. There is stuff in here that has made it a slightly off-white. The problem is that even after a day of getting it home, it will settle. And so you have to mix it up again. So that's what I'm doing right here now. And I'm just showing my kids how to do this. You've got a stir stick free from the store here. And when you do it, do it slowly. Don't get in there and try to you know, make it, mix it like a blender or something. And as you're mixing, make sure you bring the stick up and down so that you're actually getting all the way down to the bottom, bringing what's down at the bottom up to the top. Vary how you do it. Don't do it all in one direction or anything like that. And try not to make a mess out of it. Now this particular bucket of paint was uh, purchased about a week ago, so it's still pretty well mixed. But I still need to mix it up just in case. Also sometimes if you've got oil based paints the oils will separate. So the fun part comes next when we have to pour this into the pan that we have for it. It's a nice aluminum pan. We got now you can try to pour it. They have little spouts that you can get that attach to a bucket of paint like this, a can of paint. I don't have one of those here so I'll show you what I do instead is to fill this up this is for if we're going to use for rollers. Right now on this door I'm not going to use a roller. I'm going to have my kids use brushes and I'll show you why in a moment. But rather than try to pour this in there, I take my stir stick and as I pull it up, you'll see there's quite a lot of paint still on it. And I will just bring that over onto here and let it drip in. And I will keep doing that several times. And it creates a lot less mess than if I tried to pour the paint in. Then I only have to wipe up one side of this pan. This is thick, it's like milkshake, so a lot of it sticks to the stick as we uh, pull it out of there, and then gravity pulls it down into the pan. Let's put a little bit more for right now. I'll put more in here later for my kids. So now I'll show you what we do as far as painting this. When you're working with drywall like this, sheetrock, you usually you want to paint in a crisscross pattern. Now this is a special paint. It's a uh, what they call duo because it's got the primer and the actual paint together in one. So you only have to put on one coat, hopefully. Um, may have to do two here and there, but it's designed so that you only have to put on one coat. When you're putting a coat on to drywall, you want to do it in sort of a crisscross pattern like this. But on plywood like this that has a grain, we're going to see that grain and it's going to go on weird if you, if you try to do it in that crisscross pattern, it won't work. So you want to stay with the actual grain of the wood. So you want to Start at the top and pull down, or start at the bottom and pull up, and try to do one big, long thing like that. Okay, now the kit that I bought uh, for this project came with the brushes, some rollers, and the pan that you saw me putting the uh, paint into. When you get a new brush like this, there's always going to be bristles that are loose that come off of it. So I want to just, as I first get this out, I want to just kind of ruffle through it a little bit and see if some of these will come off, because you don't want that coming off in your paint on the uh, surface that you're painting. So, this one looks pretty good here. And the reason I don't dip my brush straight into the bucket, I do it into a pan, is because if you get debris on here from while you're painting, as you didn't notice that there was something on the surface there, um, then you put that debris right into your bucket of paint. And it could sink and settle to the bottom and mess up your paint. And your paint could get pretty dirty in there after a while if you don't realize what's going on. So I do it in the pan instead. So 
Now, when you load your brush, you don't want to soak the whole brush with paint. You just want to get the tips. The tips of the bristles, that's what you paint with. You don't paint with the whole thing like this. Okay? You paint with the bristles. So now I'm going to paint a little bit here. So you just want to get the tip of it like that. And then when you start, I'm going to pull this out from the wall a little ways here, open it up some. And I'm only painting on this particular thing, I'm only painting the external surface here and this edge, because that's what's going to be seen. The rest of it won't be seen. Nobody's going to see the top of this except me, because I'm six foot five. And nobody's going to see the back of this. And besides, if I try to paint the back, I'm going to get the hinges all covered in paint. And since this was put on here so nicely by the crew that, uh, that uh, helped us with this remodel, I don't want to have to take it off of here and take the hinges off and then try to put it back on again. It's in a good place. It's working. I'm going to leave it alone. So now, I'll start painting. And so, start at the top. And again, I'm just using the, the tips of the bristles here. And I just pull down like that. Pick up where I left off. And keep coming down. And I'm trying to keep an eye on how thick the paint is going on. And if I can see brush strokes, if I can see the, uh, the coloration of the wood underneath it, that tells me that I need to put on a little more even coat here. So I'm going to start further down here, work my way down. And again, here's a problem that you can have when you start at the top like this, is that you can have a whole bunch of paint that sort of accumulate there because your brush goes like this, then you're scraping off a bunch of it on the top. So I'm going to try to get that off of there. A better way to do it might be to start a little bit lower than the, than the actual edge there, and then go back and go up like this. Cover that in. So now, I'm going to hand this over to my children. 